Welcome back, YouTubers, to another Q and A, Q and A two two zero with me, Mr. Parkin, and I got you out of nowhere, NJ. What's up? Yeah, I don't know why you're being around here, but there you go. Uh, if you want to ask us questions, please put them in the comment section as per usual, and we're not wasting any time this week. We are the British Fist. Searching. So we're going to get on some questions. Uh, Paul Erickson Alejandrino, we're making up the lost time from last week. Is Randy Orson better as a heel or a baby face? I think this is pretty obvious, isn't it? Four letter word, heel. Yeah. Four letter word begins in H, ends in L. Heel. Yeah, it was heel. Yeah, he's definitely better as a heel. He's, you know, as a baby face, you know, he. It's, it seems really difficult for him to really be, you know, an energetic, like, crowd-pleasing babyface, even though he does do that to some sort of a degree. He's always just been better as this slimy, dickhead, slivering heel. And his moveset is... His moveset says that as well. There's been reports that when the WWE wanted to turn him face, he, he was against it, even though he's back to being face again. I really think Randy Orton, out of everything he did with Evolution, that was with the spark. That's where we saw the heel that we got behind and we liked. I think no matter what he does, yeah, he gets the fans going when he's about to do the RKOs, but the heel work, mic work, perfect. Just And his mic work as well is way more suited to a heel. His slow, yeah. monotonous you know, voice is just... It's, 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 it says heel. It doesn't really say babyface. I mean... He tries his hardest to be a babyface, and you know the fans do like him. You know the women like him. He's a pretty good-looking guy. He's pretty good in the ring. He's got a really cool finisher that a lot of people seem to enjoy. That whole arcade out of nowhere thing kind of started. But overall, he's definitely, definitely better as a heel. Uh, which one of these three events will likely to happen in WWE? Uh, CM Punk returning to WWE, Chris Benoit inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame, or John Cena retiring? First one. Well, John Cena's retiring is going to happen at some point, yes. so I'd say John Cena. But, I mean, that I know this whole thing going on with CM Punk and the WWE does kind of have, does kind of have you know, oh, CM Punk is not going to be returning to WWE written all over it. But who would have thought that Ultimate Warrior would be in the WWE Hall of Fame? Who would have thought that, you know, who would have thought that Randy Savage would be eventually in the Hall of Fame? Or Bruno Sammartino? Who would have thought that? So you never know with the WWE. You know what they're like. You know what they're like when it comes to you know getting ties. And they stuff brought like Sting in, which obviously with the feud of TNA, with the thing TNA thoughts and uh, the past WCW. I think with CM Punk, even though CM Punk has said many things about the WWE, I don't think it's crossed off completely. He's not done anything wrong. So I think. When the time's right, or time's needed, or the money's right in Punk's future now, I think he will, he could make an appearance again. It's definitely a possibility. Let's not rule that out. Do you want to see a Kevin Owens versus Rhino for the NXT Championship? Um, I mean, it would be a nice little filler NXT title match. I definitely would prefer them to carry on going with Kevin Owens versus Finn Balor for the time being. I mean, they've already done Kevin Owens versus Samoa Joe. My point with that is... Kevin Owens. Well, they need to get him off NXT. That's where it's going. I don't yeah. think. I think he's. Done, I think this whole Samoa Joe thing should be a WWE match. I don't think. I think once he's done with Finn Balor's rematch, he's on Raw now, SmackDown now. Yeah, it's no Raw making an appearance on NXT, but he's pretty much a Raw wrestler now. Yeah, but let's not mention this question may have been asked in like April. Yeah, so exactly. you just never know. Uh, Renegade Man 83, uh, again, evidence that this question was probably asked a long time ago. What do you think of Kevin Owens' debut? Sorry, what did you think of Kevin Owens' debut on Raw? Do you think it is too soon? I mean, his debut on Raw was pretty cool. I mean, you know, he answered the open challenge, didn't wrestle him, and then just kicked his ass. Was it too soon? No. I mean, you've seen the way he's been booked in NXT. He's, he's basically been booked as the Brock Lesnar of NXT. He never really lost a match clean until he lost to Finn Balor for the NXT Championship. So, you know, some people may have thought it was too soon. I mean, he's only been in the company. He's not even been in the company for a year. But the guy, if you look at the guy, he does look like the kind of guy that could take on a John Cena just from a stature point alone. I think there's a, there's some way. Yes, in NXT, he could have had, he could have gone bulldozed through the roster and they had to wait for the next face to take him down, which, yeah, ended up being Finn Balor, but that was after he joined Raw. But I think after you bulldozed everyone, 
going to Raw was the next big thing. So I think they did it correct. You could say too fast, but I think the way they booked him to Raw was nicely done. It's just a shame he came out of that feud again, like losing, was it three times to Cena in the end? It, it is a real shame. It is, but the way they debuted him and the way they booked him yes. was good. It's just that, again, they couldn't quite go that distance with him and they couldn't quite have that character come out on top against John Cena as usual. And it always comes to that when it's a new talent. Disgusting. So fucking frustrating. Are you a big fan of Goldberg and do you like Gilberg? I mean, the problem, the problem with Goldberg for me was that I wasn't really around when he was big, when he was doing the streak. I just, you know, I can't really say I was a big fan of him because I wasn't really around when he was about. And when he was in WWE, you know, I, I wasn't really watching the products at the time. He was going up against Triple H. He was a WWE guy. He was only there for a year. He had that terrible match with Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 20. So I just, and he had, a, you know, he had the match against Rock Jericho. He faced almost everyone in the WWE in one year. So I, I, I can't really say I'm a big fan. I mean, he was a big star for WCW, don't get me wrong. But as a, I was never really a fan because, well, I, I couldn't really be a fan of him. Again, reports again, but I'm going to combine it with my opinion. He said that he couldn't work with the WWE. He said even he didn't really enjoy his full time. Well, they probably knew they were never going to push him because he was a WCW guy. They were never going to push him ahead of guys like Triple H and stuff like that. So that's probably why it ended that ended short. And I can see I can see his reasoning there because you know they're always going to stick to their guns and push the WWE guy. And let's face it, Triple H has become a massive part of the WWE. So they're all, they're always going to push him ahead of a guy like Goldberg. Well, they made Goldberg look mm. dominant on Raw. I cannot complain everything they did no. with him, but I think. Let's combine it with the whole bring back. I don't think Goldberg would want to come back, but of course it's down to money. But I thought he wasn't a terrible guy for the WWE. He had a dominant run. So I say I, I'm i okay with him, but I wouldn't say I like him. What about Gilbert? Uh, was Gilbert just a comedy ripoff? Small guy, yeah. Really. Oh, was he, was he in TNA? Uh, was he TNA or WWE? I can't remember. I can't remember. I'm not, I can remember seeing him, but... Is yeah. that, that like WWE mocking him back in the actual era? Because I can't really remember. Uh, I don't really know. remember too much with Gold Gilbert, so I can't really answer the question yet. Would Big Cass and Enzo Amore be ready for the main roster in a year's time, and would they bring life to the tag team division? I don't think they'll be, they should be a tag team. I think it should be. I think Big Cass should be a singles wrestler, and Enzo Amore should be his manager because I don't think that Enzo Amore is very believable in the ring. And he's just an ob he's just such an obvious weakness for that tag team. They are a great tag team. They are very entertaining. But he's just such an obvious weakness for that tag team that really, for me, it just wouldn't work. So as a singles guy, I think Big Cass would be a good guy to have and as because he has the size and the look. And Enzo Amore being the great guy he is on the mic and the entertaining guy he is, you know, in you know where he is. And I think that would work, personally. I'm going to agree. From what I've seen, I've enjoyed them as a tag team. Mm -hmm. But male manager, not ever so popular, but it's a bit like um, uh, the Wyatt family. If you split them up, one of them may go somewhere, okay, but the other one, yeah, be a manager. But once that manager finishes, don't you think he'll that'll be him gone? Are we talking about Enzo Amore? Now we are. I'm just comparing him to the Wyatt. As a talker, mates. I think he'd go far in the WWE. As a wrestler, probably not. Just because of his size. So when he breaks up, if he does become a manager, mm. once that managership's finished, because most managers do part from their client, apart from Brock and Heyman, don't you think uh, Enzo will end up leaving? End up well, future endeavoured? Don't really know because it hasn't really happened yet. No, so. but I, I like them as a tag team. Yeah, oh, I really enjoy them as a tag team, just odd, but on the main roster, probably not. Do you feel John loves to suck up to the fans or praise a certain wrestler just to get a cheap pop knowing half the fans hate him? Yeah, he probably has to because it's like, again, the fans would probably hate him. So I can see why he does it because like nothing else he's going to say is going to get a pop. So, you know. To be honest, I think John Cena, maybe there's an element of Vince pushing him so hard as a face that he has a... Uh, standard to live up to so he's got to make fans like him he's got to 
praise to good guys and stuff. But I don't think it's seen a uh, seen as at a level now where he's faced no matter what. So I don't think he needs all this love that the WWE keep firing at him. Like that one time, a year or two ago, Edge came back and he started praising John Cena. And I'm just like, he doesn't need this. So in my in my opinion, I think he's okay now. He does not need all this love and attention and wording to stay where he is. I think they should just leave him to do his own thing now. Well, uh, Renegade Man 2 you pretty much primed that question for MJ, didn't you? Um, Zay, Lo- Zay Loxeth. I think that's how you pronounce that name. What do you think of the Samoa Joe NXT debut? Um, it's funny, really, because that takeover was the last NXT show I watched. So based on that, you would think I didn't like the Samoa Joe NXT debut. Um, I was a bit mixed on it because I thought that it was a bit of a mediocre debut. I mean, he didn't really do anything big. It was just a face-off. It was quite simple. Uh, but I guess for me, it was just the way that like Sami Zayn was just propped to the side for this like mediocre debut. And you know, and at the end of the day, it kind of not that I not that it was bad, but it was like the last time I watched NXT, and I was just like after that, well, nah, not anymore. Was Sami not injured? Sami Zayn was injured, but I just wasn't a massive fan with the, the way they sort of cast him to the side and the whole thing as if he was nothing. As for Samoa Joe, the stare down, that's what it was. They're, they're not like rehashed Samoa Joe and Kevin Owens. So the stare down, yeah, is a team for something in the future, but shouldn't they really follow up on that? I think they had a match. I don't really remember what happened in it, but I think they did have a match, just not a takeover show. Not big enough. I don't think it was big enough for Probably a big well. match that got reaction fans who know who yeah, they were. You'd, you'd think it would be that, wouldn't you? Yes. There you go. Um, Seamus Delan. Do either of you think you'll see we'll see a British and or Irish or a combo of both hold the three main titles on WWE within the next year or so? I mean, Seamus could win the World Championship. He's got the money in the bank. You never know. Barrett might win the IC. <laughs> Again. 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 And you never know. Neville might win the US tag with someone else. Uh, well, you yeah, never know. Yeah. I mean, they've got people that could do it, but will it all happen at the same time? Probably not. No, I think Barrett, yeah, I can see him capturing it again. Yeah, Seamus might, but Neville for the US. I can, I, to be honest, I can see it being open, happening in the next year, but I can't see the WWE putting Neville in a championship slot. Yeah, I think he's just there for good matches at the moment. Also, will Samoa Joe be part of the main roster or is it too late for the casual fan to get behind him and get him over enough to the point where he can be a main event and or feud with the Breakfast Club? Mm, we, spoke I mean, we spoke about this before, but I think that Samoa Joe, is, Samoa Joe is 36 and it's got to that point where you, you know WWE aren't really going to get behind Samoa Joe because you know a lot of his history is with other companies such as TNA and ROH. And I think that plays a big part in it, but I think he's better off in NXT helping the next generation uh, of wrestlers get a, get a lot better in the ring, etc. I mean, he could be part of the main roster. Don't get me wrong. You could easily bring the guy up and he would be ready for the main roster. He's played, he played, he did play a massive part in TNA. He did feud with Kurt Angle. He's feuded with some big, with some big names. Yes. And, uh, Jeff Hardy as well, I imagine he would have done at some point. Um, so I think he could be part of the main roster if WWE need a guy like him. I personally think he's better off in NXT, though. Is it too late for the casual fan to get behind him? Depends how you build the guy up. I mean, you could take the worst wrestler and book him really well and you know have a good story told, I mean, like a Daniel Bryan. You know, he wasn't exactly the worst wrestler, but you know, at one point, I remember you thought he was boring. A lot of the fans really weren't behind him. But they gave him a gimmick. They gave him a really good storyline, a really compelling storyline. And now they made him to one of the top baby faces in the WWE to feud with the Breakfast Club and beat Triple H to beat Batista and Orton in the same kin night. Not to mention beat John Cena with a torn tricep, by the way. So it can be done. But I don't think with Samoa Joe it will be. I think Samoa Joe, what I would love to see, which I thought SummerSlam would be a good match, was Samoa Joe and uh, Kevin Owens a match, you know, NXT versus 
WWE or however you want to see Kevin Owens at the time. I would like to see a match like that make to the main boss, an NXT guy versus a WWE guy. So I'd say keep him on NXT being the big guy there for the talent to work on. But I wouldn't mind seeing a NXT top guy, Samoa Joe, versus a top guy in WWE, Owens. So like an NXT versus WWE promotion <laughs> NXT kind of match. Okay, next that's question it. is from Jimmy Edaparillo. Parallel. I believe Hi. that's how you say the name. Try saying that three times fast. Do you think NXT should be on Monday nights instead of Raw? <laughs> no, I mean, no, 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 no. no. Made the network special. Ah, uh, sorry. Made the ne NXT on the network gave is giving the network something special. Wouldn't we take it off the network, put it onto? Is it Raw? So yeah, no, I agree. I think NXT mm -hmm. as a network special is giving the network a reason to be. It's giving the network some value. That's it. That's so I, I and also there are many reasons why I wouldn't. I mean, Raw has you know has got a brand. You know, people know about Monday Night Raw. It's the longest episodic weekly TV show on TV or whatever. So no, I wouldn't replace NXT. I wouldn't replace Raw on Monday nights with NXT. I we have spoke about. I've spoke about sorry, which we've discussed in past Q and As about NXT replacing SmackDown because SmackDown's a bad show. But like we said, the defense of it is keeping it as a network special show to hopefully, once it continues to grow, attract more people to the network. Alberto Bravo, do you think Vince McMahon is out of touch with the WWE product? <laughs> I mean, we get asked this a lot. Uh, I mean, let, let's, let's put it this way, guys. You know, Vince McMahon is, what is he, 70 odd years old now? You know, and, 80, you know, 90. A lot of people. I mean, it's like if, if you have if you if you have a granddad, let's say who's seventy years old, or a grandma that's seventy years old, try asking them, you know, about business and stuff, like that and see how out of touch they are with the world. You know, so I'm just saying, even though Vincent Mann has been with the WWE for a while and they've been stuck in this wrestling bubble, you know, he, you know, just because of the fact that he's quite old means he is out of touch with today's modern society, and you know what he perceives as. What, what he likes in modern society isn't necessarily what the masses like. You know, at times like this, you need to accept, even if you don't like it, you've got to accept what the masses want. Again, I want to defend Vince because of everything he's done for the WWF, mm. the WWE, but I think it's came to a point now where there are so many clues that Vince McMahon is concentrating too much on what he wants. Yeah, he's dropped a few times when he gives us what we want but i think i think vince is showing signs of missing out on what's right shall we say and i think i mean fair play to him that he wants to be around you know with for, to, to support his company for as long as he can uh, but there does there is a reason why we have a retirement age and there's a reason why people that are 70 odd years old don't run companies anymore and why they pass it on to you know, in family businesses, their youth. And that's, some, that's something <laughs> that's something that Vincent Mann probably should have done with Shane, you know, some time ago. Now he's doing it with Triple H and Stephanie and bringing them in slowly. Um, but, yeah, Vincent Mann, you kind of get the feeling with the way the product is being run uh, that he is somewhat out of touch with, you know, the mainstream audiences, which is what matters when it comes to a big entertainment. Especially when you're saying... Oh, we're we're competing with other entertainment shows on TV, and are still, even though the product is shit, is somewhat competing quite well. Still getting three to four million viewers every Friday, every Friday, every Monday. Sorry. I think with the decline, with WWE noticing viewership drops and stuff, I think there are so many signs. Social media, which they're saying they're keeping their eye out on or trying to grow on, with the ratings not staying as where they want it to, it drops a few weeks and. I think there's so many signs that something needs to be done, but Vince, being the main man he is, is his baby now. And we're going to answer one more question before we leave with this Q&A. Uh, RF13, who do you think will be a WWE champion in a year's time? You can pick three people each. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I think we should do this together. Because I think there are three people that could be WWE champions. Reigns. You've got Roman Reigns. Who you know you would think that WWE at some point will give the WWE championship Owens. to? Well, I'm going to say Sheamus because he has the money in the bank. Again, he's already had it. No, I agree. Um, well, not but, this belt, please. But who do you think will be a WWE champion in a year's time? And Sheamus, 
with the money that Henry takes is a guarantee. I don't think Owens will three be. Three years, I think. When he's no, got... in eight years' time, you can pick three people oh, each. Oh, right long. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. So Owens, no, but the two, Reigns and Sheamus are definites. Uh, perhaps Brock Lesnar. Again, I think with him being who he is, he's going to. But I won't pick someone that's like. It's hard because I I still stand by Owens by a year from let's say SummerSlam by next SummerSlam, but I'm trying to think of a smaller guy that's probably not held it. But you know, it's just not going to happen. Yeah. If there was a world heavyweight championship, yeah, easy. You could say Dean Ambrose. You could say people such as that. But the WWE World Heavyweight Championship is now a big belt for the company, and they need a big name holding it. This is why they brought in John Cena to face Seth Rollins. This is why they brought in Brock Lesnar to face Seth Rollins. You know, this is why they give the belt to Brock Lesnar for the best part of you know SummerSlam to WrestleMania. You know, it's a big belt now, and a big name has to hold it, and they have to do it in a big way. There is one more. Go on. Randy Orton. I think he could, could get put, Yeah, I mean, he's always the kind of guy you could put in that spot. So, yeah, that is definitely a possibility. Yep. Uh, if you have any other thoughts on that, please put them in the comment section below. And please keep asking those questions in the comment section below. Isn't that right, NJ? That is very much so. This has been a fun video. We've enjoyed it and hope you've enjoyed it too. Please, please, please continue to send the questions in the comment section below. Because the more we get, the more we keep going. And the more we go... We keep going on and 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 on. Thank you very much for watching. We will probably see you again in a week's time, maybe. Even though I'll be on holiday. Although I won't be because I'll be scheduling the upload as I always do. I will be on holiday, but I won't be on YouTube. Yeah, that. We'll leave you on that riddle. Thank you very much for watching, people. See you later.